This week on Inside Boulder News. Boulder Parks and Rec is bringing back more services this summer. Local communities including Boulder seek climate justice and see what projects are in store for the city's Vision Zero Action Plan. Welcome to Inside Boulder News, your source for all things Boulder. I'm Jocelyn Avendaño. In 2018, the city of Boulder joined the Boulder and San Miguel counties in a joint lawsuit against two oil companies to recover climate change costs. They demanded that the companies pay their fair share of the costs associated with climate change impacts. Late last month, the U.S. Supreme Court denied ExxonMobil and Suncor's request to move the lawsuit into federal court. Instead, the cases will proceed in Colorado State Court. In 2018, three Colorado communities, the city of Boulder, Boulder County, and San Miguel County, sued two big oil companies, ExxonMobil and Suncor, to recover climate change costs. This case is not about changing national climate policy. It's really about accountability for the climate harms in Colorado that companies like Exxon and Suncor are responsible for. These Colorado communities have demanded that the companies pay their fair share of the costs associated with climate change impacts. In the past, there have been similar climate lawsuits made in coastal areas like California and New York City. This lawsuit, however, is the first made by a city in a landlocked state. For several years, Exxon and Suncor have fought to keep the case out of state court, arguing that our claims should be heard by a federal judge. So every court that's reviewed this case has come to the same conclusion, and, and that is that it should be heard in a local court by a local jury. The Supreme Court also rejected petitions in four similar climate cases where the fossil fuel companies pressed the same arguments for federal jurisdiction. The Supreme Court ruling means that after five years of fighting over federal versus state court, the case can now move forward to trial in Colorado. It's important for people to recognize that these kind of cases are, are under a lot of scrutiny because I think they're perceived as trying to change um, climate policy at the national level. And I really want to stress the fact that this is a case that is really around damages. So it, we as taxpayers in local jurisdictions are paying for the impacts of climate change today. We're going to continue to have to pay. And so what we're seeking is uh, those that are also responsible, meaning the fossil fuel companies, to pay their fair share. So this is really about damages and, and uh, climate accountability. More information regarding this case may be found on the city's website. Every three years, the city of Boulder releases the Safe Streets Report, a report that measures traffic crashes and identifies trends to improve transportation safety. After this evaluation, the city creates a Vision Zero Action Plan to address the issue found in the Safe Streets Report. We spoke to Devin Jocelyn, Senior Civil Engineer with the city of Boulder, to learn what the updated Vision Zero Action Plan includes. The Vision Zero Action Plan is a list of actions and projects the city will be completing over the next five years to reduce serious injury and fetal crashes across Boulder's transportation system. The plan is designed to help the city achieve its Vision Zero goal of achieving zero traffic deaths and serious injuries by 2030. The Safe Streets report really informed what types of crashes are happening on the system and the action plan really emphasizes what are we going to do about it and how can we best address them. The updated action plan, which the city has been working on since last year, is going to focus on mitigating seven crash types that account for over 60% of fatal and serious injury crashes on the city's high-risk network, which is made up primarily of the busiest streets across the city. City staff is uh, getting ready to implement some of these actions uh, th yet this year. Uh, we're going to focus first on installing some additional uh, right turn on red signing at seven intersection approaches. We're also going to install at least one more leading pedestrian interval near Boulder High School. And we'll also be uh, doing some uh, trimming of trees and shrubs uh, to improve visibility at a few locations. Some other projects include updating practices on how the city determines where and what type of pedestrian crossing treatments are installed, also how traffic signals are operated, and make decisions about where to make changes to left turn phasing, where to restrict right turns on red, and where to give pedestrians a head start. The plan is important because at its core it is intended to save lives and really reduce the risk of using the transportation system for all modes of transportation. The plan used a data-driven approach 
to ensure that the city's resources for safety improvements are made in a strategic and impactful way. And the updated plan allows city staff to proactively implement changes to the transportation system to hopefully prevent crashes from occurring. The city is in the final stages of the Vision Zero Action Plan. The final plan will be posted to the city's website on the Vision Zero Action Plan project page later this month. For more information, please visit the website seen on your screen. Boulder has been working through the winter and spring seasons to hire enough seasonal staff for peak summer fun. Despite the nationwide labor shortage, it is expected to provide most department services at the highest level since 2019. BPR has successfully hired over 150 lifeguards to keep people safe at the city's pools, the most the department has ever hired at one time for the summer. Pools include the North Boulder Recreation Center, East Boulder Community Center, Scott Carpenter Pool, and opened for the first time since 2020, Spruce Pool. And if you can't wait for the summer to get a splash in, Scott Carpenter Pool's lap lanes and splash pad opened this week. The leisure pool and additional features are set to open this Memorial Day. Some services that were paused during the pandemic, like gymnastics, birthday parties, and golf instruction, are now being offered again. Boulder Parks and Rec continues to look for more staff, such as camp counselors and lifeguards. Anyone interested in joining BPR can find open positions at bprjobs.org. Thank you so much for joining us on this week's edition of Inside Boulder News. Connect on Facebook and Twitter. You can also sign up to receive video updates right in your inbox. Just go to boulderchannel8.com and click unsubscribe. And be sure to check out the city's online newsroom for the latest city news. We'll see you next time.